Hello, this is James Hudnall and another episode of Creative Secrets, number 25. This one is about heroes and protagonists. The term protagonist comes from the ancient Greek plays, where it's the leading character is the protagonist. The antagonist is the villain or the anti-hero. So that's where the term comes from. So just so we're clear, protagonist is the leading character of the story, and in most cases... You can have other principal characters in your story, but in most cases, your hero is going to be the main character and every other character is a supporting character. You can't really have too many quote-unquote protagonists. You can only have one because if you have too many, they will conflict with the overall story that you're trying to tell. Now, before we get to that, I should tell you that there is an opportunity to do something called the false hero, which I'll get to towards the end of this video. There are exceptions to every rule, so of course there is something called an ensemble cast in which you have multiple characters that are of equal value in the story. Most stories don't follow the ensemble cast model, so we'll discuss that in another video. But right now I just want to talk about the hero and the protagonist. The protagonist is not only your main character, it is the character that you, the creator, the writer, have decided to make the central focus of the story. Remember when I, one of my earlier videos I talked about not letting sub-characters take over the story? That's because you created a story and then you just fall in love with the character that you're writing in the midst of writing that story and decide to focus more attention on that character. You can mess up your story. So again, focus on your main character and try to make sure that everything fits and points to back to the main character's story. So let's get to the hero and the protagonist. They're basically the same thing. The protagonist or the hero is the center of the story. He is the person that you root for. The hero doesn't need to be good, but they have to try to be good. They have to be doing what they think is the best thing for them or for that situation. Your hero is essentially the positive force in the story. Unless, of course, it's a story about a character's self-destruction or something, but we're not going there right now. Because if a story starts off negatively, if it's a heroic story, then the hero will overcome either themselves or the situation and turn things around by the end. So that's part of their struggle. But ultimately, the hero is somebody who focuses on the positive and tries to reach a positive result. That's their goal. They don't always get there. But the point is that they represent positive forces, not negative forces. They're not destructive, they're constructive. So they're about doing things that are right and not negative and wrong as most people see it. A mistake a lot of writers make is to assume that their version of reality is the same as everyone else's. There is a commonality in views of right and wrong across all cultures. But there are people that are at variance with that and their ideas of positive and negative are different. So try to keep within the framework that most cultures agree are the positive things. When you try to go into new versions of what is positive or negative, you risk alienating those people who don't agree with you. The hero is also the champion of the premise. So what they are doing, whether they realize it or not in the story, is they are championing the argument that your story is making. Basic example would be good defeats evil. So if you are making that argument, then your character will prove it through their actions. When I get to the villains next episode, I'll be talking about how the villain is the counter premise to your hero. So the villain is a champion of the other side. So you'll have to show that the hero's ideas are better than the villain's, and you have to do it convincingly, which I'll explain more in the next video. The thing to remember is that you should have the character go through a lot of serious trials and tribulations in relation to the story so that it feels like they actually worked hard to get to where they are, that they didn't get there easily. One of the biggest mistakes a lot of modern writers write is to create the so-called Mary Sue character, which is a character that doesn't earn their success. They just have it handed to them. They just have automatically have the ability to do things, ridiculous things, uh, out of the blue whenever they need to. That's not something you need to have in your story. You need to make it so that the character is empathetic the character you can identify with and you can also empathize with but you understand 
and empathize with them because they're human and that they have to struggle, that they don't have everything handed to them because most people have to struggle in life. And that is where it separates good fiction from bad is the fact that the characters are believable and they're going through a struggle. Another thing that produces empathy is if the reader, the audience, sees the character as struggling to do something good, that tries to do something positive. People relate to that. They relate to people trying to do positive things. The only people who don't relate to that are people that are conflicted and have their own issues, but that's another matter. The main thing is we all are trying to do something good, even though a lot of us fail in that goal. Our characters, as I've said before, are superior to real people and they're able to achieve things. They may have their struggles and they may have their faults, but they have a clearly defined path that they're trying to achieve. And that in your story is something that you're also trying to achieve. You're trying to show all the rock, all the barriers and all the rocky pitfalls and all the potholes that stand before them. But in the end, they should be able to struggle their way past that and get to the point that they're trying to reach. So another thing you can do is the false hero. The false hero is a story where you have somebody that looks like they're the hero and the reader will think that's the hero and they'll identify with that hero and then you kill them. Bam. And then suddenly you're left with an option to figure out who the hero is. A good example of this would be in Game of Thrones where Ned Stark was the hero, it seemed, in the beginning, in the first season. Then he gets killed at the end of season one. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler, but anyway... Then you have to figure out who the real hero is, and it's a while before you can figure that out because George R. R. Martin has several other possible hero alternatives that you have to wade through before you get to the real one. So that's one way to do it. False heroes are basically a fake-out, and what you're doing is creating expectations in the reader or the audience that you're going to later deflate in order to present a different alternative, sort of red herring. This is a technique I'll explain more in another video, but anyways, you get the picture here. So that's it for this episode, the basics of what is a hero, and the next episode will be about villains. Please check the links in the description below. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Please give me a like. I really appreciate it if you will. Please tell your friends about this series, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye.